The opinions expressed in the following program are not necessarily those of Eastlink Community TV, its sponsors, or partners. Mama cooking experience. Welcome to Mama G's Cooking Experience, where today we are having our holiday treat special. Thank you to Eastlink Community TV and Seasons Pharmacy and Culinaria for helping make all of this wonderfulness happen. So let's get started and jump right in. So today we're going to do three things. First thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to make a date square that you can prepare ahead of time and throw into the freezer. Then we're gonna make some butter tarts. We're gonna make three kinds, plain, walnut, and raisin. So let's get started with these uh, beautiful date squares. So first things first, what you're gonna do is the night before, you're gonna take all your dates out and you're gonna soak them. Now, I suggest that you soak them with a water slash liquor combination mix. So Tia Maria, Cointreau, something that'll give it a little bit of more oomph in there. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna start off by making our filling, very simple. I have about three, two and a half cups of dates in here that I have uh, soaked. They're pitted, by the way, make sure they're pitted. You're gonna put the liquid in there too because it makes it part of that beautiful syrup. So nice. Gonna have to eat it twice. You like that? You can use that one. All right. There, nice and simple. We got that in there. And then what I'm going to do is also put the rind of a washed orange. Why do we wash our oranges? Because we never know what's on the outside. Okay. Let's get the rind in there. Now, you don't really need to add any sugar to your dates because good Lord, are they ever sweet. Okay, and especially if they're dehydrated. Boom, just like that. Now we're gonna put our lid on. Oh, it smells so good in here. I really do associate the smell of orange with the holidays. Okay, ready? A little bit of pulsing action. <laughs> put it on low. You want it kind of like chunky, but smooth at the same time. Okay, see what I mean? 30, 40 seconds, boom. It's all done, look at that, look at that, so perfect. Okay, we're gonna put our mixer aside, we're gonna grab our bowl. One of the secrets that I do uh, for my date squares that I learned uh, while working at Deerhurst was when you take your large flake oats, put them in a pan, put them at 300 degrees in the oven, and uh, just let them roast. Let them cook before you cook them. You know, one of the most uh, misconceptions about oats is that they're just ready to go. Yeah, they are, but they're not fantastic. So in here I have about three cups of uh, roasted large flake oats. I'm gonna add some brown sugar and cinnamon. Brown sugar, look, I even got some measuring spoons today. We're living large. So I've got uh, a heaping teaspoon of cinnamon. And to these oats, I'm going to add a cup's worth of brown sugar and some flour as well. So, fun tip, if you have uh, brown sugar and it's always in the bag at home and you find that it goes hard, stick it in a jar with a lid. And then if it goes hard, put a slice of apple in there. I'm telling you, it works. So we got half a cup here. Ah, so glamorous. All right, another half cup there, boom. That's perfect. Nice and perfect. Everybody has their own little um, holiday treats that they make for uh, family traditions or whatever. Uh, please, let me know what they are. Drop on by. Okay, so I have uh, one cup of um, brown sugar in there, and then I'm gonna add about one cup's worth of flour. No, I'm gonna add a cup and a half. I'm gonna add a cup and a half. No, a cup and a quarter, cup and a quarter. 
This is all about texture, okay, guys? Like, to have a specific recipe, okay, it works, but there's so many other factors that go into recipes. You know, what's the temperature outside? How far are we from, like, the ocean? How high are we up in the mountain? Like, it just makes, it, it makes a difference. So I've added a pinch of salt, and as you know, Mama G loves butter. So we're gonna use butter in here into our crust. Nice and easy, super simple recipe. And everybody loves it, everybody loves it. And the other thing too is don't serve such big chunks of uh, date square when you're handing it to people, you know? Like, it's not really, it's not really that kind of square, like. You're gonna use about a third pound of flour, I mean of uh, butter. We'll just put that in there. And wash your hands and get prepared to stick your hands in there because you're gonna need it by hand. You're gonna wanna make sure that all of the butter is incorporated with the oats and the flour. Yes, you can do it by machine, but don't do it. Just get your hands in there, okay? Break up the butter and the flour, and you're gonna want it to be like little pea size. That's it, nothing crazy. Nice, oh, it smells so nice. Roasted oats smell so good. This is quite simple at this point of the game, guys. You're just gonna take this all while it's all nice and freshly mixed together. It's gonna be kind of crumbly, and that's okay. You want it crumbly. Okay, because the butter's gonna melt and it's gonna stick the flour together with the oats. The juices from the dates are gonna stick the base to the top. Like, it's all good, it's all good. I say a thing here all the time, it's trust the process, okay? Look at that, oh, so nice. Oh, smells so good, so good. Just a little fun fact about Mama G's cooking experience is uh, it's unscripted. So if I feel like I'm, oh, that's what's going on. Okay, so you're gonna take three quarters of your mix. You're gonna put it on the base of your pan here. You're gonna keep a quarter of that mix, okay? Because once you keep a quarter of that mix, you're gonna put it on the top. So there, you got your base. Got it all in there. I'm gonna move this over, wash my hands. When we, Put all of this in the bottom. You'll see. You might be nervous about it, but don't be nervous, okay? Like I said, put it all in. Spread it nice and even. Put the crumble on, put it in the oven. 350 for about 35 minutes. Then you take it out. So when we come back, I'm gonna show you how to make our crust for our butter tarts and our filling for our butter tarts. Mama G's cooking experience. Kitchen and recipe ingredients provided by Seasons Pharmacy and Culinaria, 815 Lawrence Street, Sudbury. <laughs> And in this segment, what we're gonna talk about and what we're gonna show is how to make pie dough and then make filler for our butter tart. So let's jump right in. Now, I have made my own leaf lard. What is that? It's, uh, I've taken the fat from my pig and I've rendered it down, which means I put heat to it, low heat, and I got all the fat out of the membranes and I put it in a jar because it's the best for making pie dough. Now, if you're a vegetarian or vegan, or have issues with pork, that's fine. You can always use uh, vegetable shortening, butter. Use butter first uh, before you use vegetable shortening, and then uh, you'll see that it's uh, a much nicer product. So I've got two and a half cups, let's start. I've got two and a half cups of flour. Let's do, uh, let's do like uh, four, let's do four cups of flour. Okay, because I'm only going to make 12. Who are we kidding? Who are we kidding? I'm going to make more than 12. We all know that. So I've got my flour. I put a little pinch of salt. You know, keeps everything good. And then I've got about, this is a 250 milliliter jar. 
I'm going to use about half of it. Okay. Making sure, okay, so here's some pro tips, you ready? Number one, making sure that your fat is as cold as fat can be. Uh, making sure that your rolling pin is cold. What will happen is you will get yourself a really nice flaky crust with the, the colder of all of these things. So I'm gonna put in a half of the jar, which is one in a 125 milliliters. Okay, boom, got that in there. Check. And then we bring out our trusty uh, pastry cutter. It's so funny that I'm searching for things because, you know, here at the pharmacy, we like to use words like patent. And if you understand patent, then you understand us, you know. And for those that don't understand patent, it's slang. <laughs> it means thing or item. Uh, it's a French-Canadian slang. So you're going to cut the fat into the flour and salt here. Um, and you're going to want it to go pea size. You know, everything's pea size. If it looks like a pea, it's good. It's good. Now, I don't think I have enough fat in here for my flour content. Like I said earlier, you have to touch everything. You have to look at everything. That's the only way you're going to do it. Now, why am I not using my hands? to uh, break all this fat into the flour. It's because my hands are hot, the hot hands. So I'm gonna use the rest of this fat in here. Do, 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 get it in here. Okay, there, that's looking better. Perfect. We're just gonna add a little smidge of cold water to bring it together to form into a bowl not a bowl, into the bowl, into a ball. Da -da -da. Um, let's use uh, two tablespoons, super cold water. Getting our hands dirty yet again, here we go, here we go. Circling from the outside, bring the flour to the water, don't bring the water to the flour. Okay, mix it. Bring it from the inside, mix it. Oh, this feels good and cold. There we go, there we go. Once it forms into a ball, you're gonna roll it out. You can also buy these, okay? You can buy the tart shells. Don't feel like, because I do it here on the show, that you, this is how it's done. You can go and just buy the tart shells. No one will. No one will hate you, it'll be great. At the end of the day, they're just happy that you showed up. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna turn it out onto the table and you're gonna form it into a ball, okay? I can feel the chunks of fat still being one and you can see here like they're still being mushed in, which is perfect. There we go. Nice ball, nice ball, nice ball. Take some flour. Let's be real. There we go. It's nice and simple, you know? You got like a few minutes of your time during the day. I like to, so look, here I'm cutting mine up. I like to put them in little balls and let them rest a little bit. So one of my cool fun facts that I like to do is the large mouth ring of the mason jars fit the muffin tin uh, holes perfectly. So clear off some space, put a little flour, flour your rolling pin and just let the rolling pin do its job. Now the goal is to not make it too thin or make it too thick, obviously. Take your lid, make as many circles as you can within the space that you are, you've rolled out. Perfect. So I take my dough, it goes in perfect, and I just put it in, and I stretch it out with my thumb 
to the top of the muffin well. The muffin well. Took me a second there, guys. Took me a second. So you can see that I filled up the pan with all of the tart shells, and now we're gonna make the filling. So what I'm gonna start off with is melted, but not really melted. I've softened the butter. I have a quarter cup in here, because you want it to like break down and, you know, mix with the eggs and the sugar. So let's get that in here. Let's break it down a little bit. Okay, we're gonna add three eggs. One. Always crack your eggs in a separate bowl. You're basically looking for like three quarters of a cup of egg. If you're using liquid eggs or egg whites, you can use egg whites too. Break up the yolks. Do do do, yolk breaker upper. So, uh, we're gonna put in some cinnamon. Boom, a good uh, teaspoon's worth. We're gonna add some brown sugar and some 35% cream. Brown sugar, we're gonna put in, this is a quarter cup, so we're gonna put in half a cup. No, let's put three quarters, let's be real, let's be real. We want it nice, we want lots of fill. Lots of fill. Okay, mix this. Cream, boop, boop. It's like the anti Midas touch this morning. Everything I touch is being difficult. Okay, cream, putting in uh, at least a cup. At least a cup. You can use 18% and you can use 10, but if you're gonna use 10, uh, try to make sure that uh, A, it's super, super cold, and B, you're using a lot, like big eggs, like yolky eggs, like more yolk than white, because you need that creaminess to stick it all together. Okay, butter, brown sugar, egg mix, simple, simple. So. What I do and what I have learned over the years is do not put your uh, walnuts in here into your big mix here. See, look, once you add the eggs, the butter breaks up into like little chunks, which is what you want. Make sure that your brown sugar, like you're supposed to sift your brown sugar and I'm like old school, like mamea kind of cooking, where I just kind of like take my fork and my whisk and I just kind of mash it up on the side. Okay, so here's what I've learned. One, take your walnuts, shove them in a bowl, shove them in the oven, 350, 10 minutes. Smells good, brings them back. Put a few little granubs in the bottom of your tart shell. Like, don't fill it, okay? Don't fill it. You fill it, you're not gonna have any room for goo and you need the goo, okay? Raisins, like the dates, soak them. Because if not, the minute that you put them into your stuff here uh, and you put your goo on top, it's gonna soak up all your goo and it's gonna be dry. It's not what you want. You want creamy, okay? Got a little bit of here. I got about, I don't know, 10, 10 raisins per, 10 raisins per uh, tart here. Spread them out a little bit. There you go, that's beautiful. And we'll do 10 plain. Baking is just that, you know? It's creativity, it's science. It's delicious. Okay, I'm gonna take a measuring cup. This one here is a quarter cup. Boom! Quarter cup is perfect. Making sure that you get a little bit chunks of fat so that it does it with it. Oh, it's so good. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw this into the oven and I'm gonna put it in for 35 minutes at 350 degrees, excuse me, and uh, they're gonna be perfect. When we come back, we're gonna make fudge and a little secret called the pet dasar. No, 
Technologies Cooking Experience. Kitchen and recipe ingredients provided by Seasons Pharmacy and Culinaria, 815 Lawrence Street, Sudbury. Thank you. And now what we're going to do in this part of the show is I'm going to show you how to make sukkah creme and des pet de sar. So sukkah creme is a very traditional French Canadian sweet treat that, uh, well, everybody makes, honestly. Everybody's got a batch and everybody has their own version and everybody likes their own kinds, but let's just jump right in. It's quite easy. So you need a pot, you need a candy thermometer. So in here, what you're going to do in your pot is you're going to melt two tablespoons of butter, uh, go salted, it's, it, that way you don't have to add salt. I've got one cup of white sugar. I've got two cups of golden brown sugar. And I've got one cup of 35% cream. Boop boo, everything delicious. That means the holidays to us, those three ingredients. You're gonna mix them together in the pot. Your pot's gonna be on medium heat, okay? And all you're gonna do is you're gonna keep stirring it occasionally, okay? Make sure it's all dissolved. Stir that occasionally until the temperature reaches 235 degrees Fahrenheit. Which, in candy world, it's softball. Still pliable, mild. okay? So, while that is coming to a boil, to a, a its temperature, we're gonna do another little uh, sweet treat with our leftover pie dough. So I'm gonna get a little bit of flour happening on the counter here. And all my pie dough leftovers, I didn't roll them out twice, okay? I rolled them out once and that's it. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mash them all back together into a ball and I'm gonna roll it out. I'd like to say that it's like the funnest thing I do in a day, but it's really not. You know, I find it therapeutic because I get to use my muscles, but pretty much that's as far as it goes. So, put a little bit of flour, put some on your rolling pin, okay, roll out your dough. You want it to be thin, but not so thin that you can't pick it up off the counter. Now, there are some tricks of the trade to rolling it out. You can put uh, Chinese chopsticks on each side of your rolling pin to give you the desired thickness in which you are looking for. You're looking more to make your dough like a, um, like a square or a rectangle, which will make it a little bit easier to keep its form. Right? Okay, boom. Look at that. Oh, so nice. Now, Here's the schmutzy part. You're gonna take butter and you're gonna smush it all over the dough. Okay, you can melt it and you can uh, uh, use a pastry brush if you don't like getting butter on your hands. But this is how my grandparent, my grandma taught me. She's like, Tun, just take the butter schmutz it all over. She didn't use the word schmutz. She's not Jewish, but I learned that. Okay, look, see, your hands are hot enough just to get everything everywhere. Oh, look at that, looks so good. Okay, brown sugar. Put a nice, I don't know, as much as you want or as less as you want, okay? Like, it's not gonna affect it. This is just a little, a little side treat, okay? Make sure that it's, all the balls are broken up. Cause nobody likes to eat a sugar ball. No, no, okay? You roll it out, you put it where the butter is. So fantastic. I'm gonna take my leftover nuts from my, um, peak, from my butter tarts. And I'm gonna put them in. Ah, use them all, use them all. We're good. Okay, take your thing, your pastry cutter, and just tuck it over and pat it down, okay? You're gonna do this. Make sure to pat it down so that everything's incorporated in the dough. 
Okay, this isn't like cinnamon buns. You're not trying to keep the stuff separate. No, you want it smushed in. Okay, squeeze it all in there. Because nobody likes a pet thesaur that breaks apart. You get chastised. <laughs> At my house, you do anyway. Okay, even it up at the ends. Boom, look how easy that was, you know? Get your cookie sheet. You're gonna slice it up. You're gonna put it in the oven. 25, 20 minutes, we'll say. Finger thick, okay? 20 minutes, 350. There you go, sweet treats. And here we have the selection of our finished products. Our pet dessert, our butter tart, our date squares, and our sukkah creme. I would like to take the opportunity to thank Eastlink Community TV. And I would also like to take the time to thank Seasons Pharmacy and Culinaria for supporting Mama G's programming here. Thank you very much and have yourself a wonderful holiday season. Make sure to bake all your treats yourself.